If your name is in this list, Sandy, Andrew, Irene, Ike, Katrina, Wilma, Charlie, Ivan, Dennis, Floyd, people probably associate you with a giant tropical storm. Or at least did at one point. Hey there, Tracy here coming at you from D News. In the Atlantic, we've got tropical storms and hurricanes, while the Pacific has cyclones, tropical cyclones, and typhoons, yet somehow they all have short, consistent names. How did that come about? Storm naming dates back centuries. In the 19th century, storms were named after the saint's day on which the storm hit. As that century drew to a close, the Australians began to use female names. There wasn't really a standard system, though. Often, meteorologists would talk about storms based on their location, or worse, by their latitude and longitude. Without the names, storms can be difficult to talk about, report on, and get people to pay attention to. Imagine trying to inform the public of that storm 500 miles west of Los Angeles and heading in a west-northwesterly direction. Or that storm at 41.4 degrees north, negative 49.3 degrees west. Remember that one? So the world breathed a collective sigh of relief when we just decided to name the damn things as a group. The National Hurricane Center in the U.S. started drawing up lists of female names in 1953, and male names were added in 1979. The lists of names are alphabetical, with the first storm of the season getting the A name, like Andrew, Anna, Alberto, Arlene, depending on the year, and the second getting a B name, and so on. We don't just name any old storm, though. No way. Tropical storms are named when their winds reach 39 miles an hour and become a hurricane or a typhoon when its wind speed reaches 74 miles an hour. Last year, the Weather Channel started naming winter storms, too, saying, quote, a storm with a name is easier to follow which will mean fewer surprises and more preparation. But I suspect a big part of it's to generate buzz and get people to watch the Weather Channel. The names are kind of weird. Brutus and Xerxes and Q, it sounds like a bad episode of TNG. Europe names their winter storms too and have been since the 50s, so maybe we're just late for the party. If you're wondering why we don't name the land-based storms like tornadoes, it's because they come and go too fast. Tornadoes can be devastating, but they're much smaller, and they appear and disappear far too quickly to name and track. Today, the World Meteorological Association handles the naming lists, recycling names, every six years. The exception is if a storm becomes monstrous, like Andrew or Sandy or Katrina. Those names are then retired out of respect for those affected. If you're curious, the lists of names can be found on NOAA's website. Some of them are pretty ridiculous. Do storm names help you follow their progress like out here in the real world? Let us know what you think on our Facebook page and click like if you want to get behind the scenes videos and pics. Plus visit testtube.com slash dnews to see all the dnews first. Thanks a lot for watching everybody. I'm Trace. See you later.